Intel Core Ultrabooks are going to be game changers. Uh, this is the first product that we've delivered and, and designed at Intel from the grounds up with Ultrabook in mind. All those other 140 designs I talked about today were things that we had to retrofit that were already in development somewhere through the silicon development process. So Haswell's the first product line that was designed grounds up, fourth generation core, for Ultrabook available later this year. We're going to be able with these devices now to interact naturally with touch and with voice. And so what I'm announcing today is that the fourth generation core Ultrabooks will have mandatory touch required. To be an Ultrabook in the fourth generation core, it will be required to have touch. We'll have voice capability, and we'll demonstrate that in a little bit. It's going to turn on essentially instantaneously. When you open the lid, within a couple seconds, you get access to your data. And it's going to be always fresh data. So what does that mean? Either through Microsoft's connected standby or through Intel Smart Connect, when you open the lid of your computer, all your email will be fresh, all your Twitter feeds, your Facebook, all your data will be updated already because we have a way to kind of update that while the lid is closed. For all day battery life, what we're announcing today is with the fourth generation core, we're going to be able to deliver the largest battery life increase, generation on generation, in the history of Intel Corporation. Absolutely all day battery life, where you just don't have to bring your power brick at all anymore. With thinner, lighter designs and mandatory Intel wireless display. So we're going to be enabling millions of consumer electronics TVs with people like LG, Samsung, and Toshiba already in the market today, but wide eye or Intel wireless display will be mandatory for this Ultrabook. It'll also be the most secure platform in the market with anti-theft capability. You can hardware lock your PC if it gets stolen. It'll tell you where it's at. If it's at the taxi cab station in downtown New York, you'll be able to know that the taxi cab driver dropped it off there. You can turn it back on with a password. It'll have Intel Identity Protection Technology so that you uh, are, have a more secure presence on the internet. It'll require antivirus and anti-malware with more announcements from McAfee coming. And of course, this is where we really unleash the convertible category. So what I thought I'd talk about today is show you the first internal Intel reference design based on not the third generation core, that we talked about with uh, Acer and Lenovo, but what we have internally at Intel now already running on the fourth generation core processor. So this is our concept platform, or our form factor reference design called North Cape, and it's in a full Ultrabook experience, a 17 millimeter Ultrabook. It has a battery both underneath the keyboard as well as behind the display, and the CPU here actually sits behind the display. Uh, this is going to deliver an amazing 13 hours of battery life. So think about the average notebook sometimes taking about four hours of battery life. We're talking about delivering 13 hours of battery life as a full system. But what's unique about this is we've created a one-finger detach mechanism that you can simply remove the keyboard and we've got an amazing tablet experience here. Uh, 850 gram core i5, i7 capable machine uh, at 10 millimeters. It's going to deliver up to 10 hours of battery life. So it has a one-handed detach mechanism. And uh, what's interesting is we've created something called smart frame. So this is essentially 11.6 inch form factor. But what we're able to do is hit a little button here and the screen increases to a full 13.3 screen. So you get a full 13.3 screen experience at 11.6 by using some things around our graphics drivers. And if I, uh, if I test this here, we'll kind of play a high-end racing game, if I'm any good at it. I guess I'm not. But this is something where you now can get, with accelerometers and all of the sensors that were typically only available in notebooks, something that already on third generation core, uh, from Acer and, and Lenovo, we showed is five times the performance of a Tegra 3, and now is going to get even better as we launch this uh, later this year. So, outstanding work by the team at Intel to get this, this going. How about that? All right. So this is really one-handed detach, a smart frame concept to go from 11.6 to 13.3, uh, 10 hours of battery life in a tablet at just over 800 grams. So pretty amazing stuff. And we think we'll see these kind of 
convertibles down at $799, $899 uh, kind of price points when they first come out. Okay, so let's move on from mobility and talk about the innovation that's happening and some of the game-changing things that are going to happen in 2013 around all-in-one computing. You know, um, we coined something called bringing back family night, but what we're really talking about is the evolution of what has been the traditional desktop. Um, what's amazing is that 80% of homes in mature markets have a desktop. And 88% of those homes use their desktop computer every single day. There are 200 million desktops out there that are four years or older. And with Windows 8 and Touch and the all-in-one, we think we're going to dramatically change that. So, you know, I thought I'd just uh, pull off a typical all-in-one here, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, this is the Sony TAP20 all-in-one, and uh, of course it's running Windows 8. Uh, but what's been unique about what we did this year in all-in-ones, we were the first people to obviously have touch, and then you could lay this into easel mode, so you could get much better manipulation of this uh, screen if you're doing things like creating a slideshow or, or painting or those kinds of things. It makes touch much more intuitive if you're sitting at your desk this way. And more and more, we're getting to lay flat all in ones. But there's something that I guess we, we, we've shown here on the Sony that we'll talk more about, and that is that we've actually removed all the wires from the desktop. The Sony Tap 20 actually has a battery in the back. And what we're talking about today is delivering an entire new ecosystem of kind of semi-portable, what I would call mobile all-in-one or tabletop computing. And that's going to basically enable a shared experience for both business and consumers, where you can interact with this touch screen now from any side. And because we're talking about 10-finger touch on the screen, you can have multiple hands playing games or these kinds of things around the screen. So we call it bringing back family night. So what do we mean? Well, this is much more than just hardware platforms. Today we're announcing a broad ecosystem around these mobile all-in-ones from hardware partners like HP, Dell, Lenovo, Panasonic, and Sony, and HP, but also a growing <coughs> range of software that's going to be taking advantage of this kind of uh, application. We'll show some of those. After Mouse is going to be delivering 10 multi-user touch applications, things like as simple as Domino's or Pong, Casino or Sudoku. Microsoft will be delivering Mahjong to the platform. Uh, Sesame Street will be doing a whole set of educational games for six to nine year olds where you can actually have four different six to nine year olds playing around the screen doing math. Uh, people doing, uh, four different people doing mixing of, of audio and music. And Electronic Arts uh, doing Monopoly. So what we have over here is just a brand new example of the tabletop PC that Lenovo announced yesterday. This is a 27 inch battery backed all in one. Um, and, you know, here we have a typical family, whereas instead of everyone kind of huddled around their phone, we've actually got them, brought the, the mobile computer over to the coffee table, and they're playing uh, Electronics Arts Monopoly now on a distribution furnace adaptive all-in-one category using the dice and, and uh, really bringing the family together on all four screens of the, of the adaptive all-in-one. So, after the kids go to bed, we're in Vegas. So let's play some poker. So we got our demo team here. What can we show them here on the same machine uh, after the kids are in bed? So you're playing a little poker, I see. Yeah, Kurt, what we've got here is we've got a poker application, and this allows us to uh, not only use that same great Lenovo Horizon, all in one that you saw, 27 inch screen, but uh, we've also got some additional functionality in here that allows us to uh, actually uh, interact with this using, uh, using our phone. And so with this, what we can do is we can actually go in here and we can see our cards rather than having to, you know, we can use the obviously the touch screen to make some gestures to look at cards, but then our, our buddies can see what done. All so, in. So this way, this way we can actually see the cards in our own hand on our Android phone handsets here and interact with the application on the, on the touch screen. So, so great, this is an example where you have multiple people playing poker, touch screen on, on there obviously, but actually interacting with the cards on an Android application on an Android phone. So uh, great stuff guys, thank you very much. So this is just a simple example of uh, how the all-in-one category is evolving as well, not just on the hardware side, but on the software side for education and, and gaming and things like that. Okay, today we also have a several announcements from our service providers. Um, the service providers have been noticing that Intel is 
in the tablet game now, in a big way with Windows 8. Obviously the detachable Ultrabooks and convertible Ultrabooks, as well as the all-in-one kind of getting out from underneath that desk where we used to collect dust into places like the kitchen, on the tabletop, and even onto the floor with kids playing on the floor as I showed you earlier. So what Comcast is announcing today is that using the new Intel Puma 6 silicon, which will be announced later this, uh, in the first half of this year, they're announcing an Xfinity XG5 home video gateway that you'll be able to see in the Intel booth. And that Atom kind of based Puma gateway will deliver for the first time full premium TV content and video on demand through multi-screen without a set-top box. So today with Comcast as the largest cable operator in the United States, you need a set-top box on every TV to get premium content. Because of the security across Intel devices, they're now gonna basically put this home gateway in the, in the home. Uh, it happens to be based on an Atom core and the <coughs> Intel Puma Silicon. Uh, but that's going to enable full streaming of premium, full, their full pay TV and video demand com content. And you can see that in the booth, available from Comcast through their Xfinity services later this year. In addition, in France with Bouygues Telecom, one of the largest uh, operators in France, a multi-billion euro company, they've won the Best Broadband Experience Award based on their Atom-based uh, gateways last year. Uh, they're supplying and, and launching as well this week uh, full pay TV, video on demand, and catch up services anywhere on the Weave Telecom network onto things like the adaptive all in ones, but also even onto Intel Android phones and uh, Ultrabook computers. So you can see we're delivering premium pay TV. The service providers are now putting that premium pay TV content on the devices as we become more, more mobile and the desktops get into areas like the kitchen. These will be Windows 8 applications, and this week Telecom app will be available in the fall of 13. Okay, lastly, let's talk about um, maybe the, the best for last, and that is, let's talk about perceptual computing. You know, we have been interacting with the PC, with a keyboard and mouse, for decades. And in 2013, we're going to change that. We're going to change that by adding eyes, ears, voice, touch, and emotional context to the PC. We're basically going to give the PC the same kind of human senses that we've all had by putting better microphone, better eyes and ears, etc. on the PC. So we're adding natural human interfaces. Uh, we've had a center of excellence under Muli Eden. And I'd like to bring our, our Director of Research and Development for Perceptual Computing, Achen Bomek, to the stage, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Achen. Thank you, sir. All right, so um, let's start out with what do we mean by perceptual computing? Just give them a quick overview. Yes, like we said, in perceptual computing, we're adding human-like senses to the computing devices. Eyes, ears, touch, emotion, and context. So we can have interactive, lifelike experiences with our computing devices. So our CEO, Paul, last year at CES, talked about voice and a relationship with Nuance. Maybe we can give him an update on where we're at in 2013 with our voice progress. Right, so yeah, we are already shipping Dragon Assistant Beta that was developed in partnership with, our, with Nuance on Dell XPS systems. And this year in 2013, we expect to... So Dell is already shipping the beta uh, software from Nuance. You can download that if you're a Dell Ultrabook customer. We'll be launching nine languages in 27 countries. And the way we have our voice assistant, uh, and you've seen demos of this before, you can basically uh, interface with Facebook and Twitter, do posts with voice. You can do a Google search with voice. You can interact with Wikipedia. Command and um, control. Command and control with gaming. So uh, this is on track, it's launching out with Dell, and we're expanding our relationship with Nuance. We'll show you um, some, some more of that in a second. I guess the second area is uh, passwords. passwords. Yes. And you know, we do about 220,000 interviews a year at Intel, believe it or not, of end users. And one of the things that's most startling is how insecure we're making our PCs and computing devices. In fact, uh, one of our anthropologists said that in a recent breach of 32 million passwords, the top four passwords that showed up were 123456, followed closely by 12345, <laughs> followed by ABC123, and not last but not least, the word password. <laughs> so now you're going to have to redo all your passwords after you leave this because we've, we've dissected your code. But what we really want to do is have a vision where you are your password, where your voice, your face, it yes. just works, right? So yes. maybe we can show them the progress we've made here. Yes, with perceptual computing, if the system can recognize me, and the oh, one thing we can do is have me log, in, log into the system. Great. Uh, this system has been configured to recognize me. 
And as you can see, I didn't have to type in my password. It simply recognizes me and lets me into the system. Yeah, well, yeah, that was pretty quick, pretty fantastic. The simplest demos are sometimes the hardest, especially when they work. But hey, I've, <laughs> I've seen this before, right? You can run a video, you can show a picture of somebody, and this gets spoofed, right? Well, what are we doing different with the camera technology, You're right, our relationship with our sensible vision? So the face login has been in academic research for decades now, and we have also seen some products that didn't work very well. Uh, our solution with sensible vision is very robust. Mm -hmm. We use advanced image processing to incorporate and place spoofing features that do not you know, let you into uh, the system with your photos and videos. So how many points on the face are we looking at? We have multiple points and, and faces and intermuscular movements, advanced technologies that we have built into the product. Right, so we're looking at you know, probably seven different points on the face. We're looking at multi-muscular movements. And then we can actually add multimodal capabilities, which would be the combination of logging in maybe with voice and with facial recognition. That is but this is something that is shipping today. Uh, again, with Dell starting out, but this is going to go pretty ubiquitous across the world, we think. A real robust, simple password technology, given most of us don't even put a password uh, on our device. Across systems and customers will see okay. okay. Well, uh, let's move on to gesture. What yes. do you do on gesture? So, it is not just about uh, 2D camera and facial fish, logging, but at the Intel Developer Forum uh, a few months ago, we announced a perceptual computing software development kit and this lightweight, single USB powered, small form factor 3D camera device that has close range gesture interactions face recognition, voice recognition, and 3D object tracking capabilities built in. So this kind of thing used to be something that you'd have to plug into an AC power adapter in your wall. We're now, for the software development kit, plugging into a USB stick, and this will be available through retail as a low-cost peripheral this year, in addition to what we're already using for the last about four months with our software developers uh, in a relationship we have with Creative as yes. well. Yeah. And we have seen thousands of uh, developers download the SDK and starting to develop really interactive applications based on it. So we've made a lot of progress getting the software development community from an AC power adapter to a USB you know, powered. But of course, uh, we all remember these sitting on our desktops a long time ago or on our monitors, right? Uh, rest assured, Intel's working to integrate this directly into all-in-one computers and Ultrabooks uh, in the future as well. And, and we'll, uh, we'll come back to you with when exactly that happens. So what can we do with this camera before technology? I, before I show a demo, I'd like to point out that Two-dimensional interfaces, like Kurt mentioned, mouse and touch, confine the users to the, you know, the plane of the display. But when you have 3D computer vision and 3D camera, it allows you to interact with the system because it can understand 10-finger fine-grain articulation of your fingers in the three-dimensional space. And when you have that technology, you so can... We've seen some of these before, and it kind of the hand looks like a nub, and it all looks like one point. What we're talking about here is with our software development kit, the ability to actually see every single one of your 10 fingers yes. and what they're doing in three-dimensional space. So we could open doors in a game, close doors, and right. anything our fingers would do. Yeah, and let me show you a demo of that. Okay. So, you know, this, I'm going to go inside the application here, immerse myself, and as you can see, the system understands the fine fingers movements, and I can really interact with the objects in the screen let the coins you know, accumulate off my finger, I throw them away. This level of interactions in the three-dimensional space is not possible with mouse, keyboard, or you know, 2D cameras. This is really after about 90 to 120 days of coding following the software development kit release that our developer forum. Yes. Okay, great, and what else can we show? So, you know, I'd like to show Portal 2. Our partners at uh, Sixth Sense uh, has enabled Portal 2 to be played with hand gestures. For those of you who have played Portal 2, it's a very popular game, of course. And you, know, you need to go in and uh, with a uh, Portal gun, you manipulate your uh, cube. Here, I am moving this into the three-dimensional space. To do this with uh, keyboard and the mouse, you wish you had 20 fingers. <laughs> and I'm taking it inside the system. I align it on the pedestal. And very simply, I drop it. So, you know, I, I can go on hours playing this game. Uh, this is something that typically maybe had a multi-hundred dollar controller in. With games like Portal 2, we could use not just the gesture, but voice as well, and be able to interact while we're manipulating the object. Right. Maybe use voice to say Even drop. voice recognition for fine control, and it's immersing yourself into the content, finally. Okay, well, that, gaming is like, interesting. It's big site right. for us, of course, and, and so that's interesting. What else so it's what can we do with this kind of technology? So it is not just about uh, interacting with 3D and uh, playing games. But with 3D computer vision technology, 
we can transform the, uh, the way people communicate with each other with video. So we can make video conferencing immersive. Here you're showing, I'm showing an example. I have my friend Diana over there. Uh, you know, she, I'm trying to have a uh, chat with her to decide what movie to rent. And this is what you see when you do that with a traditional video conference. Uh, I can see the, the objects that we want to talk about at the back, but significant part of the screen is also blocked by the background. We have the technology for recognizing 3D around us, so we could take that away. So Diana, why don't you take your background away, please? So that is the beauty of 3D camera and 3D computer vision technology. And now we don't have to be cluttered by the background. Imagine yourself into the content. It's not just about immersive video conferencing, but also video blogging with green screen, where you can create content with yourself in the, in the content. Yeah, so all of you are going to have more competition because we'll have more video bloggers with that uh, screen behind them trying to, to uh, report the news, I guess, right? Right. <laughs> and, okay. And also, and uh, one thing I'd like to mention before we uh, move out of the SDK is we have rolled, finally rolled out the million dollar developer contest. Uh, you know, the uh, details are on the Intel website and we're seeing a lot of traction. Uh, uh, developers that are coming up with really ground breaking ideas that are being prototyped right now. All right, one more maybe. Uh, what, what can we do so now? So we're not uh, stopping at uh, gesture recognition. Uh, imagine the computer being able to track your eyes. And uh, with our partner, Toby, uh, we are working on technology to track your eyes. Here, you know, I have one of the most popular games with the kids in the US. When you see it, it's where is Waldo. And in the next screen, uh, I have the task of finding Walter. And the way I'm doing that right now, you can see my eye on the screen of Philip. I'm trying to find Walter. And Walter, there you are. Don't hide. So you can see I can find Walter simply by moving my eyes. Okay, I see Walter on the left side here. There he is. So Im imagine immersive, intuitive gaming and fun content that is enabled simply by tracking where you're looking on the screen. So that's fantastic, uh, that's fantastic news. So here's what we showed you guys. Perceptual computing coming to computing in 2013. Voice in nine languages across 27 countries is coming from Nuance with full Facebook, Twitter integration, etc. We talked about gesture and full 10 finger, not just basic page turning or basic ge uh, gesture recognition, but full 10 finger articulation to our software development kits, uh, eye tracking capability, uh, as well as touch being required on the Ultrabook. So fantastic job, Achin, Thank you, uh, from you and your team. And stay tuned for innovations in this space. Thank you.